Grab your popcorn, rip that ticket, get in that seat, lickety split it. Go watch a movie. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Go Watch a Movie, episode one thirty-three. I'm Kelvin, and I'm Robert. Thank you for joining us today. Just want to say a massive thank you for all the people who helped uh, get last episode, make it our biggest YouTube uh, show so far. It was fantastic. All the new subscribers. Thank you so much. I see you. And we very much appreciate that. Um, today we're doing a it's, it's you know, blockbusters are hard to come by these days around this time, you know, <laughs> uh, because of the the. Uh, the thing who shall not be named uh, <laughs> but uh netflix i think has answered our call uh we're doing extraction today starring uh old chris hemsworth uh, but before we get to that a little bit of entertainment news <laughs> um so hellraiser familiar with old hellraiser of course Mr. Pinhead. I've only seen the fir- the first one. I know I'm going to lose some uh, ten five points <laughs> for that, yeah. but uh, I've only seen the first one. And Mr. Pinhead is getting his own show on HBO. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sounds tales from the crypty. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I think it can work. They do. They do television very well over there. Uh, uh, show, like, what's the format supposed to be? Like, is it going to be like him introducing like a different story each each time, or is it going to be like an ongoing? I think it's an ongoing uh, episodic. Just him and it's it's very early stages. Uh, right, is there like only at the writer hired on? Um, you know, getting producers and everything right now. So there's not a whole lot of details, but I think it's going to be episodic with. With him, maybe I don't know somebody trying to stop him, that sort of thing. Because uh, they're what from another universe, him and his kind. Well, right? they're, they're they're either where they're where, the like, according, <laughs> according to the movies, like they're angels to some and demons to others. So I don't know which. I guess they're mm. just demons. I, I don't see other angels, but yeah. I don't know those pins, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing angelic about that. That could be uh, what's it called? You get the pins in you to relieve stress and stuff. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that's what he's doing. He's got a lot of stress. <laughs> Just like ah, this is the life. <laughs> uh, I got a little well, acupuncture. There we go, acupuncture. Yeah, I cannot think of that word, but yeah, I don't know. Um, moving on, Netflix. Netflix is testing it again. Uh, I think they've done a couple since then, but. Bandersnatch. Remember uh, Bandersnatch, the Black Mirror, Choose Your Own Adventure? I I didn't get – I do know what you're talking about. I never, never did get to watch that, though. Even though I love Black Mirror, I didn't watch that because it wouldn't work on my TV for whatever reason. Ah, okay. Uh, they are – they're moving moving on, though. They're doing it into a show I think is going to work extremely well with um, Unbreakable Kimmy Smith. I don't know if you've seen that one. Uh, she's uh, – premise of it is this priest had these girls it's a comedy show uh gonna tag that right off the bat but these, <laughs> this priest had these four wives down in a bomb shelter and he told them that the end of the world happened and they ended up escaping and getting out and it's the, and they were down there their entire lives so they escape and get out and now they're experiencing the real world for the first time and, and then she's extremely naive and quirky and she moves in with this big sassy guy and he's showing another world and, you know, they get into antics like that. It's, it's very funny, very, very cute show. Uh, but it's going to be doing that, that, that format now of, um, choose your own adventure with her. Uh, it's got, I think, four seasons currently and this will be its next, next big tackle. Uh, I was going to ask if it's something you would check out, but apparently you haven't seen it at all. I don't know. I mean, that's still on the fence about it. I mean, it sounds like a good idea because I remember the books that were like that, but yes. I don't know. What if you don't like the path you take and then you dislike the show because of your own decision? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like... You made the show bad? Yeah. What? It, yeah. Isn't that an I'll issue? Is anyone about thinking about this? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the show because of my decisions. It's like, oh. and I don't think they, they should have done this. Uh, maybe you can just, I guess, 
Yeah, and people are probably going to do it most of the time. Yeah. yeah. But... I'm, and I'm sure that's what they're bet- betting on. Because, you know, people are going to hop on. Ooh, now I'm going to go back and see what happens if I pick it this way. Um, and our boy, oh, well, my boy, I don't know if he's your boy, but Daniel Radcliffe is going to be in it as well. Um, Ch- so. Chances are, though, you should really only like one outcome. All the other ones are going to be sucky for you, but except for that one. Well, I mean, if you look at it, like, imagine, because they filmed all of this stuff, you know, so I don't think they would film, like, a <laughs> shitty outcome. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, you got, well, what's the point then of picking your own adventure if you're, if you're always going to end up in a happy place? Well, that's true. Okay. Uh, I can, okay. I can see that. But okay. So imagine it's not necessarily a happy place. It's just different. Like in this one, she marries a guy. In this one, they decide not to get married and she goes on some order of other sort of adventure, you know, and, and gets murdered and gets murdered by a crazy <laughs> cult or something. Yeah, exactly. That's see, I don't like that ending. I want the other one. <laughs> no, I just like the show. You see what I'm saying? Fuck! I just ruined Kimmy Smith for you. <laughs> oh man. Um, well, we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> Possibly ruined for everybody, but uh, uh, this one is. Uh, pretty, pretty pressing. And in fact, it's going to take us into, uh, let's discuss the showbiz. Um, AMC bans all universal movies from their theaters. Now, let me start from the beginning with this. Uh, So this all started with Trolls 2, the sequel. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, Trolls is coming up to VOD. Happy day. Wrong. Wrong. It's not a happy day because apparently, uh, I guess fast forward now, Trolls did great on VOD. So happy day for some people, Universal in general, but not happy day for theater people because the... Uh, chairman of Universal, the CEO, came out and said, um, Trolls did better than expected and uh, than we expected it will do on PVOD. And wow, we're going to be doing this from here on out, even when theaters open. Now, that doesn't sound too terrible, right? He's happy that his, his idea worked. Mm-hmm. Doesn't sound bad. It was bad because what that means is so there's a three month exclusivity window uh, for movies to go on digital and movies to be in theaters, etc. cetera. Uh, so what he basically said is, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be putting these straight on to VOD and while they're in theaters, hence losing theaters money, much needed money that they will need. Now there are multiple sides to this. Because AMC then came out and said, it is disappointing to us. But Jeff, Jeff is the CEO of uh, Universal. Jeff's comments to Universal's uh, un- unethical actions and <laughs> intentions have left us with no choice. Therefore, effectively, immediately, AMC will no longer play any Universal movies in any of our theaters in the United States, Europe, or Middle East. Because they would be, like I said, losing money if he did the simultaneous thing. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think? Who's in the wrong here? Now, let, well, I guess before I ask you that, bigger picture, like this is bad because Universal is Universal, Fast and the Furious, uh, the Troll movies. Um, so a lot of uh, Jurassic World series, Sing 2, No Time to Die. At first, the boss baby, too, if you care about that. Uh, Candyman, those are big names. And there's the list goes on and on and on. Universal is a massive company. So is this shooting yourself in the foot? If you're uh, in- I think I think he probably shouldn't have said it out loud if, he, yeah. if they planned on doing it. I think 
I don't think there's anything wrong with him wanting to change some of his content to how it's being released. I think he should make that the content that he wants to go on video demand. He should it's, have it specifically for that. Like mm-hmm. it should it shouldn't be like. The big, the big pictures like the Fast and the Furious or, or, you know, Twitter. Yeah. it shouldn't be the big ones. It should, those should still go to theaters to help protect theaters and, you know, keep them alive. It's all, we're all one big chain here, whatever you want to call yeah. it. And so we should, we should be protecting each other. But at the same time, if you wanted to make content that were not, not the big stuff, but the smaller stuff and put it on video for de- demand, I could understand that. But I wouldn't say we're going to do this all the time with a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and just basically cutting, cutting these guys out so they don't make any money and we just make it all. That's, that's kind of not a really a, a good move in my that's, opinion. Especially right now when they need it most. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to need those big titles to, to get back on their footing. Um, well, he came out and he apologized. There was a misunderstanding. Um, he has no, no intention of shooting, uh, AMC in the foot like that, but a little too, little too late because, uh, Regal Theater's owners also came out and said they are batting universal films. And unless this is fixed, um, Jeff did say uh, in that second statement that he will be talking to them behind closed doors and which is like you said, it probably should have been done in the first place. But if this, if a deal isn't made, if something isn't done, that's going to be a massive blow to theaters. Uh, like, like they're like, I think they're shooting themselves in the foot because you're going to, it's those moviegoers. <sighs> You, got, you have your movie goers, you have your stay at homers. And then this situation now that we're in is basically going to make even more stay at homers. So you don't want to give them another reason to stay at home by saying your favorite movies aren't coming to our theater. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> like it, yeah. So, and, and, uh, I, and I understand people like fewer and fewer people are going to the movies, but there's still, I think, a solid group of people who get excited about seeing a, a picture on the big screen. There's just there's mm-hmm. something about the yeah, me too. There's something about the the it just it just heightens the quality of the movie. I don't know why when you see it on the big screen. There's just something amazing about it, and I think taking that away from people is 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 a bad move and putting like a really big like let me just use Fast and the Furious as an example even though I'm not a fan of it well, if you if you put that on the small screen you know right off the bat I don't think the effect is going to be as good as nope. as that as that big screen view I mean there's just something magical about that moment going to the movies to see that that big you know it's just there's just something great about it so we shouldn't we shouldn't be doing anything that would hurt that you know in our lives one hundred percent agree. There's 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 no reason to take that away. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's like I said, this is a major implication. I, I'm I'm sitting every every article I see, every contact I have in the press, I ask questions. I'm trying to learn like what what is going on. Do we need to be? Is there anything we can do? Like, do I need to push mm-hmm. you know theaters or whatever? Because it's 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 it could get bad. It could get real bad for for cinema fans. And, and I know we're in the midst of a pandemic right now, and people are dying. But this, you know, hopefully, yeah, and I feel I, yeah, and I feel like theaters will band together against that because yes. they're they're going to see that there's a bigger picture there. Because if everybody starts doing that, they're completely out. You know, so they're going to band together and you know fight whatever this you know misunderstanding is, and then hopefully resolve it into something that we all can benefit from. That is the hope for sure. Um, yeah, I, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. You scared? You nervous? You don't care? Uh, either way, <laughs> let us know. Uh, but yeah, that will bring us to trailers. You first to me, sir. Uh, you go right ahead. All righty. Uh, I am going to. There's a streaming service out there that not a lot doesn't get a lot of love. It has its horror fans because it's all based on horror. Shutter. Um, they do all horror movies. Pretty pretty nice streaming service. Uh, this this movie actually came out last month, but uh, I just the trailer just passed my 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 way. So spreading that love along. Uh, the room. 
and not, oh, hi, Mark, the room. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, a different room. So this family, husband and wife, uh, move into this new home. Apparently, they've been trying to have uh kids and they had they've had two miscarriages already bleak i know um but uh but they the husband actually finds out in this house that the they've been murdered the last residents were murdered and uh yeah so he actually also stumbles upon basically the room of requirement from h potter <laughs> It's very much that he goes in there and he's drinking because he's all depressed. The wife is mad at him. You know, she wants to leave, possibly leave the house. And he's down in a thing of booze. And he's like, and he finishes it. And he's like, man, I wish I had some more booze. And boom, another bottle of booze just appears in the room. Sounds like heaven, if you ask me. But <laughs> he then is like, oh, wow. And he quickly realizes and he asks for original Van Gogh. It appears. And then he pulls her in. And she, he's like, this is original Van Gogh. And she's like, oh, my God. Uh, she, no, first, she doesn't believe him. She's like, yeah, sure. He's like, ask for anything. She's like, I want a million dollars. Money starts raining from the sky and all that jazz. And, it, you know, they show various scenes of them in bliss because they're getting everything they want. But then... The wife asks for a baby and the insanity starts there because things aren't what they seem, seem the room is actually doing bad things as well as the, what seemingly are good things and the chaos ensues. It looks pretty damn interesting. Uh, like I said, imagine Harry going in there and asking for, I don't know, the room to give him Voldemort's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But that's that's mine. The room. Yeah, I saw that one. That was a pretty good, a pretty cool trailer. Uh, mine is called James versus his future self. Oh, I already am intrigued. <laughs> so it's basically a story about a guy. I guess I, I think he might be a professor or something, and then he all of a sudden gets captured, and some old guy sitting in front of him. And he's like, you know. So I captured you because I'm you, and basically you screw up your life, so I'm here to help you fix it, essentially. And I'm not going to say this trailer looks like the greatest movie ever. It's kind of one of those kind of feel-good adventure-type movies where, you know, there's a little bit of romance in there, and he's gone. You probably know it's going to work out in the end, but I like the idea of it. Basically, somebody coming back from the future – because he's unhappy with himself. So he wants to change that, even though he's not going to be able to change himself because he's from the future, but he wants to give yeah. his past self a chance at a high pay. You know, it's kind of like, you know, self-sacrifice or something. I don't know. I just like the idea of that in a movie. So that's, that that's my, awesome. that's my pick for the week. <laughs> James versus his future self. We all want to go back and fix something. I'm sure. Um, and if you don't, you've lived a very cushy life. Not that that's yeah. a bad thing, but. <laughs> but, but when you do, you, you don't, you're no longer who you, you are. You become somebody else. If that's okay. <laughs> you're okay with that? <laughs> I love me. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, that'll bring us to extraction. Uh, watch button, if you would not mind. A black market mercenary who has nothing to lose is hired to rescue the kidnapped son of an imprisoned international crime lord. But in the murky underworld of weapons dealers and drug traffickers, an already deadly mission approaches the impossible. Director, Sam Hargrave. It stars Chris Hemsworth, Rudd Raksh Jaiswal and Randy Hooder. Thank you, Watchbot. Uh, we did this... Uh, a couple of weeks ago on trailer sodes, actually, a um, yes. little bit before it came out. And we were a little harsh on the trailer. Not too bad. We, yeah, it didn't uh, really, I'll be honest, it didn't impress me. The trailer does not impress. Yeah, it, yeah. But uh, this is the Russo brothers and Chris Hemsworth coming back together, um, which, which should automatically, I should have been, even with that trailer, I should have been like, yeah, fuck yeah, but I wasn't. And I got put in my place. Um yeah. You and me this both? is this is like a one of those uh like an action movie with heart mm -hmm. um and that's that's rare to come by because normally you can like uh let's say john wick 
yeah, his wife died and his dog died, but you don't, you're not really like, <laughs> you know, <True. laughs> but, uh, with this, you, <laughs> you kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you're sticking to the boohoo, John Wick. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I kind of boohooed a little bit in the first John Wick, but after that, I didn't boohoo anymore because he's too <laughs> badass to boohoo at that point. But in the first movie, you boohoo a little bit, especially with the puppy. Yeah. I, I was pretty broken up about that because nobody should kill a puppy. Um, leave puppies alone. <laughs> As Jeff <Jeffrey does. laughs> Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, extraction. So this isn't just a movie about Chris, Chris Hemsworth going around kicking ass. In fact, he is the poster child of this, this movie. But he is not necessarily the only star. There are actually, in my opinion, three stars of this movie that help carry it to greatness. Um, him, uh, the, the kid and this other, other assassin guy whose name I'm not going to say because I'm, I'll probably <laughs> screw it up. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, he, 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 like those three. You, you get entwined in this, uh, menage a trois of a story. Um, that doesn't just mean sex, does it? I think that's like, just I hope three, not. Three ways. Because we're talking about two grown, two grown men and a boy. I hope that's not where you're going. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Thank God. But, uh, but like they all have their own stories, their own, um, sensibilities that, that you want to, you want to feel like, uh, and we'll get deeper into that, but uh, your, your first impressions of this, sir? Uh, first impression, like I said, the trailer didn't exactly draw me in. I was like, it had some things going like wrong for it. One, it was just, for me, I was just thinking it was just going to be an action movie. Two, it was on Netflix, so I'm thinking, well, it's probably going to be kind of like maybe Six Underground or something. It's probably going to, you know, bejazzle me, but it's not going to, you know, grab or pull up my heartstrings or, you know, make me feel anything. So, but then I get in there and then it starts off kind of yeah you know like okay it wasn't mm-hmm. like, again it wasn't great but they didn't start off on it with the boom but boy does it when it gets there it just it doesn't stop after that and i was just like i couldn't i couldn't look away i was thinking at first this is going to be you know this, um, this is kind of a long movie i'm gonna sit here i think it was a couple hours i can't remember i felt like man this is going to drag and it didn't it just as soon as it, sw- it swept me off my feet and it just kept on carrying me all the way through the entire thing you knock me off my feet now, sure baby. Did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I agree. It, it's, it, um, the twists, the turns, the, the fun, um, all of it. You get it all in this movie. And, and we should have known these people gave us Endgame, Infinity War, you know, um, uh, and Fat Thor. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, I have to tell you, it's, uh, I was more engrossed with the the assassin who wanted to protect and actually kind of get the the kid than I was Chris Hemsworth's character who is exciting um and and, and he has a great story as well but this guy is in a rock and hard place yeah he works for a a drug lord or uh some sort of criminal kingpin uh but at the same time he just wants to protect his own child Mm-hmm. From, from, and, and from being murdered. And because this guy's very serious, but he, the guy's in, in FBI or in prison in uh, custody and his, his accounts are frozen. And, and this guy's shouting orders like, go get an army from behind bars. But at the same time, he's like, you don't have the money. How am I supposed to do this? But we find out this guy is very fucking capable of doing this. Yes. And you don't know it <laughs> until you see it. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. I was like, where did that come from? Um, but yeah, I was very, very en- engrossed in this. Like, you know, cause we get the whole, he's there with his wife. He, you know, he kisses her. He's watching his son. He's, he's, yeah. So it, it hit me in all the right spots he did, but. But Chris is no slouch either. Like he has his own amazing story of, and I love the way we meet him. You know, he's, he's, uh, basically just takes a leap that the guy's like, yeah, that's, that's led too high. Sorry. That's not Australian. I apologize. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Chris just jumps right in. So yeah, it's, uh, and then we find out, you know, his, his details. Um, what do you think of, of Mr. Hemsworth? 
I think he did a really good job. And like again, like I'm a fan of the Thor movies. I, I like him as an actor. I didn't think I was going to be able to get into it because he was in it. You know, I was just going to see all the other you know parts he's played that I loved. But he he definitely transformed into this this soldier basically. So I, you wow. know, hats off to him. I mean, I got, I got to give him credit. The I didn't think he was I, I was going to be able to see anything other than Thor, but I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he definitely removed himself from Thor. Um uh especially Fat Thor. Uh <laughs> he, yeah. he drank he drank beer like Fat Thor though. That's true. Yeah, he was a little depressed like Fat Thor. Um, I also so. What's that? I said rightfully so with, yes. with the circumstances. Yes. Yeah. I didn't uh, realize how many like how the stories all revolved around children either. I don't know if you, it's yes. pretty obvious. Like, even, you know, the main character, well, I was, I was assume the main character, Chris, I mean, his, his child, obviously that loss. And there's the kid mm-hmm. who's basically screwed no matter what he does because he's, his dad is who he is. And then the other kid who is completely innocent and, you know, is just being wrapped up in this thing, you know, without even, even knowing it. So it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool how this all revolved basically around kids and wanting to protect them or, you know, longing for, you know, they, from from losing them, and then trying to protect yes. them. So I don't know, so much going on. Yeah, he, he felt like he had to, like you said, um, regain that that because uh, he, he's like, oh, well, that's gonna get into spoiler territory. I think we can, so we can fully talk about this movie. Um, so spoilers. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think because there was a point where he's like, you know, he wasn't even there for when his son died, so protecting this kid for him is like that second chance you know he was i'm not gonna let another one die um so that 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 just like that's what i'm saying this movie had a lot more depth than you think it would um and, and that just that worked for me big time like that 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 was the big plus i gotta tell you when um stranger things uh Yes. Hellboy. Hellboy popped out. Um, mm-hmm. He like, wow. Uh, that fight scene between those two, Thor versus Hellboy. Did you ever think you'd right. get to see I, it? Yeah. Dave, like, <laughs> David's a big boy. I, I forget sometimes yeah. that he's, cause I see him in the show, you know, he's, you know, it doesn't really look like he can, you know, but he can. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. He's, he's a big dude. That's David, why he played Hellboy. David, David Harbour. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. You help me with his name. David Harbour. He yeah. is not a small man. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it, seeing the two of them go at it was was great. I mean, I, you didn't think at first he was going to be able to? Because I keep looking at Chris, I keep thinking Thor. You know, no one's going to be able to. Like, yeah. You know, he just jumped off a mountain and landed in a lake and then just hung out. You know, <laughs> that's what Thor does. <laughs> and then so what's what's Hellboy going to do with that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but granted, they did make a point to show a, a few times. That he was taking advantage of Thor, uh, Chris, Chris's, uh, wound, arm wound. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So do you, do you think he could have taken him? I think, uh, he, yeah, I think there, w- he wasn't on the same level as that guy used to be in the special, you know, forces that was working for the kid's dad. He wasn't yeah. on that level, but he was somewhere below there. Yeah. Cause that, those two, now let's get those two fighting. That's like fucking, uh, Snake Eyes and what's the other G.I. Joe? The one that they always fight the two ninjas. <laughs> uh, Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow fighting. Like that was, yes. they were, oh man. That was, that was super impressive. And I loved how the fights really didn't conclude because they both got hit by vehicles. <laughs> like, it's like we're gonna have to break this up somehow. I'll hit him, hit him with vehicles. <laughs> you hit him with the truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fantastic. Um, and then there is even more depth in this because you have you int- you're introduced to another kid who wants to prove himself. Um, the street gang kid. Mm. kid. Uh, and from the start, you know, he shows, like, I, I was like, should I root for him? Or should I not? Cause he's just trying to save his own life. You know, he's trying to, and then he, then it kind of morphs into he wants to prove something to himself, I think, because he got embarrassed. He wants to prove that, you know, well, I, I can stand up with these guys as well. Um, but he was also started protecting, just, you know, he got introduced to us by protecting other children, even though after we saw one horribly get tossed off a, a roof. 
But yeah, he was willing to give up fingers to to prove that he was worthy. So that's another freaking layer of this movie. And and it, and I, I don't I don't think we should spoil all the way, but it comes into even greater play later on in the movie. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, it's just, what happens later on in the movie, I don't think without spoiling anything that the way the way it went down doesn't, in my mind, give him any street cred. No. Uh, well, mean, so I don't, think he, I don't think he achieved his goal. He can tell that story, though. You know, I mean, well, we're going to have to get yeah, the think, think about this. Yeah, because think about the story he's going to tell. Like, this is what I, I waited till all these really, really, you know, skilled fighters had it out. And then when it was over, I snuck up behind somebody, you know, and did something. That's what his story is going to be. That's not brave or making you a no, badass. You, That's just making would you, you a little, hold on a second. Little, pan, would you, a little pansy. <laughs> I don't 100% agree. It's that would. But after you kill the man nobody else could kill. You're not going to go back and say, yeah, I snuck up. You're going to be like, yeah, I walked yeah, on that Everybody bridge. was watching. Everybody. I walked you. on that bridge <laughs> and I pulled out my gun. You, you yelled said, his name. Fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's going to believe that one. <laughs> I said, hey, Thor, fuck you. <laughs> Anyway, the the kingpin guy was up there watching with binoculars, so he would have known. Oh, and then he, and then he probably would have just I shot him after. He was quite in range. He was just like watching, listening. Well, yeah, you're right. He was, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. He put. He yeah. He definitely would have killed him for lying to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that dude was ruthless. Um, Which is another but, character that I really liked in the movie, just because you don't you don't often think of like that type of a character like a gangster. You know, mm-hmm. like outside of in my, the United States. At least I don't. Whenever I think of gangster, I, I automatically think of somebody from the states. You know, yeah, or uh, like a, 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 a cartel leader or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I usually don't think of you know a gangster from that you know side of the the planet. So seeing mm-hmm. that, you're just like you can see like. You're the level. You're the level of gangster you are is directly proportional to where you're living at. You know what I mean. So if you're living in this crazy slum of a place, and you're just that much harder of a gangster. That much controlling more the cops. Like you couldn't bring that guy to the U.S. because he just ended up killing everybody. It's like yeah, it's just because he yeah, because he's yeah. It's just I love that character just because it was just he was that ruthless. He was. Yeah, and he had every oh man, everybody in his pocket. <laughs> Mm-hmm. When you can when you can call the entire city for, for your beck and call like that's something like that's massive. Um, and I have to say I really enjoyed the brutality. Like they didn't pull any punches, and and not like oh yeah gore, but they did it tastefully enough to where it fit what they what was happening in the in the movie. Like the headshots. Um, the one in particular with the, when the, when she snapped the guy, holy cow. But, uh, yeah. Uh, standout moments for you. Oh man. The first thing that grabbed me were the fights. I'm thinking, this isn't, this isn't going to be a waste of time because the fights are really cool. But then I think it wasn't necessarily a moment so much as it was just the gradual layering on that there's more behind this movie than just gunshots and explosions that there's actually heart so i think it was a slow roll like a slow roll for me just slowly built it wasn't any defining moment it was just all of it together so when you finally get to the end of the movies which i don't want to spoil for anybody because it could be left up to a lot i mean just you could say that you know it's one person or you could say it's somebody else you know yeah. there to kill you know to, to kill the kid so all of it together, just it just c- completely impressed me. I liked how it how it flowed. I right, agree. Um, yeah, the, the fights were were that, those are going to be hard to top in future movies because mm-hmm. like, that was just some insane. I saw some behind the science scene footage of those fights, and it's just oh crazy. Uh, I've been feeling almost like I think I've said it before, kind of burnt out with some types of movies, and action has been one of them. And then John Wick really helped pump it up again for me. I saw yeah. that, and I was just like, man, they really, you know, they brought a little bit more. This movie, I've got to say, it probably went beyond what Wick did, as far as getting me pumped for action movies, because I didn't see Ooh. this type of of heart and soul being put into just a, an action flick. I don't even want to really even call it an action flick. I want—I don't even know what to call it, but it's a 
it's so much more than, than just action. It's, it's got some heavy drama, some mystery, you know. Got yeah, some, even, it even though... Really, it didn't really have romance in it. I didn't really catch too much romance, maybe a little bit from the guy and his wife and who was trying to protect mm-hmm. his son, but not really enough to consume the whole movie, so. Yeah, because cause Chris, like, you, you would think at first it's like maybe his entire family died. He's just like, no, she left me. You know? <laughs> I haven't talked to her in a while, you know, so... um but yeah, it, it didn't really have any lulls. Like, uh, like the action was, was heavy enough. And even when it wasn't action, just the, 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 the conversations, the, the dialogue, all of that were just superb. Um, so yeah, it's, whew. Yep, whew this is not, what a this ride. Is not, this is not cheesy action. I don't know what kind of action it is, but this ain't cheesy. This is good. This is, this is real deal. And this is, this is another one, uh, back to our earlier, let's discuss the show business. This is one I would have loved to see in a the theater. Like this. Yeah, is, this would have been amazing in a the theater. I mean, yeah. I'm glad I got to see it how I saw it, but, you know, mm-hmm. when I saw it. But yeah, in the theater, this would have been amazing. Cause like, especially with that huge city, just seeing up, yes. seeing that up on the big screen, it just would have made you feel like you were there. And, and on that note, I'm glad you ended it with that. Like you were there. Uh, not since Children of Men's End Scene. Mm. Have I seen the the cameraman make you feel like you're following them around? Like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like it just puts you right there in the action, seeing some beautiful shots with that style of camera shooting. Uh, I love that. That was just and he's following them upstairs, jumping over things with them. It's just oh man, yeah, it's just fantastic. I loved it. Uh, well, you have Rotten Tomatoes pulled up, sir. I do. So the tomato meter gives it a 67% and the oh. audience, yeah, and the audience score is 71%. What the actual, what the actual Thor's hammer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Milnor, I don't know. I, it's, it's, I get, I'm happy that they're above 50, I guess. Cause I think this, yeah. this should be like in the 80s or 90s myself. I don't really see hardly any any technical flaws with it. I mean, I don't really see any any story flaws. Uh, yeah. it, had, it had insanely good action. Like this could stand up to any action movie you can you can show me. And yeah, this is this is that good. It's got the I mean, the only thing it lacked was I think is is romance. Yeah, it, it had a little bit, but not enough to just you know consume the movie. So I don't know. You know, what, what other people got from it, but I think this is as far as an action movie or, or even just a drama or anything is just great. Yeah, I'm not even gonna, gonna try and re-comment on that because everything you said was true. That's yeah, just, I, that's just, I, they're I, just wrong. Yeah. And I regret <laughs> everything I said about the trailer because now that I've seen the movie, it's just like, <laughs> I feel like I should get beat up by Chris Holmes. You know, I, I think he should beat me up right now just because I'm like, that's how good yeah. the movie is. I'll take it. I'll take a punch. He the or face. the uh, he or the assassin should kick my ass because of what I said about. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I I agree. I can't. I can't. Like I said, I'm gonna. I gotta say anything else about it because you you hit that right on the head. Um. I guess. Yeah. But uh, definitely. So for sure, go watch for you, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go watch. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Go watch for me because. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, there's there's no reason not to. It's on Netflix and it's it's fantastic, fantastic bit of movie making by the Russo brothers. Um, as, uh, of course, like I said, Infinity War Endgame. They they may help create the highest grossing movie of all time already, and they did a fantastic job with this one for uh, for Netflix. Um, but where you can find us? That was annoying little almost bark I did there um, <laughs> where you can find us uh, go watch movie.com the one stop shop for all things entertainment uh, I will put the trailers on there the news stories are there the podcast is on there the show is on there on the podcast page um, the YouTube show uh, once again thank you for everyone who helped uh, make the last episode our highest highest uh, viewed uh, episode uh just, just thank you all for that. And, uh, you can find the podcast anywhere a podcast can be played. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's episode 133, Extraction. Um, now we're gonna extract. <laughs> Hopefully not as violently, but, uh, I'm sure you could, you could take out a few people for me with your puppet skills. Whoa. <laughs> uh, that's episode 133. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Go watch a movie.
Grab your popcorn, rip that ticket, get in that seat, lickety splicket, go watch a movie!